All right, so we're back from uh, Detroit. I uh, got in at like nine o'clock last night, which is about 12 hours of on the road, 10 of which at least driving, and uh, I slept really well last night. Um, so today, now that we're back, well, I'm back. Greg's in uh, Houston or Dallas or Houston last night, Dallas tomorrow. Anyway, um, back to the Camaro. So we had a couple issues and I talked about that a little bit in another video, in the Tool Tuesday video. So we had the fuel pump take a dump uh, on its um, inaugural road test. And uh, I mean, we made it eh, five miles and then the fuel pump started uh, howling away. So unfortunately that had to go. So last night, well yesterday, I stopped at Summit Racing and we picked up one of the Tank Sink in-tank pump setups. Uh, I'm gonna do that today, but uh, first we gotta siphon out, uh, I think there's like eight gallons of gas left in the in the Camaro. So what I'm gonna do is, since it still has a pseudo functioning pump, I'm gonna see what I can do to get as much as I can out of it right away. And um, hopefully I don't make too much of a mess in the driveway. So stay tuned first, obviously, get the cover off it, and I'm gonna jack up the back end so that I can get it out or crawl underneath it, because I can't fit. And uh, we got a couple other issues. We had an injector stick wide open. I spent half an hour on the phone with, uh, on hold, with Fitech this morning. And uh, they're sending two new injectors to, uh, to take care of this. Hopefully that doesn't take too, too long because I really want to get this thing done for Labor Day weekend. So we were in Detroit this weekend with uh, our friends Grant and Christine. They own the Camaro and uh, you know we want to get this back to them this uh, hopefully by Labor Day weekend or for Labor Day weekend which is also Grant's 50th birthday so great time to have your midlife crisis car and um, see what we can get done. Uh, we had an issue with the circuit board uh, for the instrument cluster. It actually burned up um, due to a bad grounding it was uh, it was having issues with the factory ground. I added another ground, and when it did that, it uh, it roasted. So they're uh, they're exchanging that. I've got a new one. I picked it up at Summit yesterday. We're going to do that too, but that's pretty straightforward. You know, remove the instrument cluster, which is already still out. Take all the bulbs out. I'm putting all new bulb sockets in. It's just they're two ninety nine a set. It's really not that expensive. So just replace them. Get new bulbs. They're one ninety four. It's not a big deal. And that way, you know, it's all said and done. It's all new. Uh, I'm gonna put two new grounds on the back just to be careful. And uh, I'm gonna replace the fuse just because um, the challenge is going to be trying to find that mini, mini glass fuse. Um, because you never know, it could be the wrong fuse in there. Um, either way, got a whole bunch of stuff to do and it's already hot. It wasn't even this hot in Detroit and uh, it's like 85 degrees out. It's like noon on Monday. Um, I'm kind of glad I took the day off. We got a bunch of stuff to do, so stay tuned. All right, so this is what I got. This is the tank sink setup. Um, I haven't even unboxed it yet, so we're gonna go through that. I also, this was like a $500 kit. This is the F-Body, so Camaro and Firebird, first generation. And uh, at the same time, I also picked up a couple of these fitting barbs so that we can run from the MPT that comes out of the pump to uh, two hose barb. This is for dash six, so three eighths line. Uh, I'm gonna clamp them as well, just because, I mean, I like the push lock, but I like the assurance of an extra hose clamp on top. And uh, I'm gonna unbox it and show you guys what's in here. And there is a procedure on how to set this up. So stay tuned. All right, so this is what we get in the uh, Tanks Inc. pump kit. Um, I'm not even, I haven't even opened up the tank yet, but this is what we get in with just the pump unit. So they break it down, you actually, it's a universal pump that goes into their tank, and then it's a universal sending unit. And the sending unit over here, you've got to adjust. It, uh, it's designed, it has the right um, fuel measurements, resistance values for an early GM, but uh, you gotta adjust it for different tank heights. So it's designed, it can work in a pickup truck or, or whatnot, or a deep sump, etc. Anyway, this is their pump setup. You've got to, uh, it comes with everything you're gonna need. You just have to kind of modify it. And anyway, we've got this, uh, this is a Walboro 255 pump that we're gonna actually put in it. And it comes with it, and it comes with a new sock, and it comes with the, um, all of your, uh, 
it's even got the pass through for the wiring, which is great. Um, they do recommend that you make an access hole in the floor of the tank or in the floor of the trunk so that if you ever have to service this, you can do that. Um, I'm really hoping we don't have to do that. Um, it's really not that hard to drop the tanks out of, out of a Camaro. Uh, I really don't want to have to cut up a floor that we've already sealed with uh, bed liner spray. So we're going to leave that out. But having the in-tank pump is going to be fantastic. Uh, I hope this is, well, it's 250 Walboro, so it's going to last a lot longer, and especially being in a sump. So not only is this in-tank, and it's going to sit right down at the bottom of the tank, but there's also a built-in uh, basket inside here. And with the return coming in and dropping right underneath the, uh, or into the basket, this fuel pump is always going to be submerged in fuel, which is awesome. Um, it's a lot more convenient, a lot more stable. I didn't realize that this kit, this whole kit, was like 500 bucks. Um, if that had been the case, I wouldn't have bought the Phytech kit. Now, flip side, you do have to run a fuel filter. And, uh, you know, that's really not as big a deal as you think. Um, I wouldn't have bought, well, I wouldn't have recommended that Grant buy the, uh, the Phytech sending unit. The only thing to remember if you're running a Phytech kit is the... Uh, the fuel pumps are regulated or pulse width modulated from Phytech right off the bat and you have to go into the settings and you have to set that at a 100% duty cycle. Uh, the other recommendation is run a relay to make sure that the pump is getting enough fuel, uh, enough current supply. And it takes the load off of the Phytech unit as well. Uh, remember that all of this power is being modulated by the throttle body's uh, onboard controller and all of that current has to flow through a ground path somewhere. So make sure that the throttle body is properly grounded. Apparently that is the majority of the issues with the Phytech units is that the throttle body is not grounded. Now I made sure that this was okay. I am still going to make sure that there's an extra ground, a redundant ground on the back side of the throttle body to make sure everything's okay. But for now, we're just gonna build this out. I did find specs on uh, on Summit's website, actually, for the Camaro, it tells you what the depth of the tank is and everything. So you can use those. You can go through the installation instructions here, which tell you to check the certain height. So you're going to measure the depth of your tank, and uh, you're going to cut this value here, there, blah, blah, blah. And it basically looks like that when it's done. So now I just got to do it. I might put the tent up because it's, it's getting really hot and it's really sunny and I'm wearing all black. So... Let's keep going. Still working. All right, so now I'm caffeinated up and we're gonna do a really quick zip underneath. I'm still hiding the old fuel tank under here because when I finished this up, it was all a big, huge monsoon. But here's that new tank sink tank. It, uh, it fits up nicely. It does hang a little tiny bit lower. Um, it comes with new straps because of that. And uh, I'm gonna have to get rid of that bracket that I made and plug in the holes in the fire or in the floor pan, trunk pan. But uh, overall, really nice setup. I gotta shorten up one of the lines, uh, I believe. I was doing it in rainstorm. I really wanted the thing to run. But uh, I like the coating. I like how it all turned out. I wish we had done this right from the get-go. Um, that's uh, that's a you know life lesson. I still have to figure out where I'm going to run the vent line. I think that might actually be the line that is hanging down there um, because they want it higher than the fuel filler neck, which on a first-generation F body is between the taillights. So the only way to do that would be to vent into the trunk. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that. I'm honestly thinking about running it into uh, the wheel well, um, and uh, that may be a very good viability now that I look at it. I may run that line straight over there, and I might actually have enough room to do it. And the cat's unhappy again. So let's uh, let's see what we can do, but um, this is going to be interesting. So. I figured I'd give you guys the update. Unfortunately, I didn't do a video while I was assembling, you know, just because it was raining. Um, and uh, this is a much, much quieter pump. I will say that. Putting the, it's a Walbro 255. Putting that in tank, so much better. It does smell like fuel under here, but that's probably because I've got an open tank sitting right there. 
Um, it's really unfortunate because that I got that bulkhead to actually seal up really nicely on that that old fuel tank. But I'm gonna be able to get all my AN lines back again. Yay! Um, anyway, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can uh, make a video out of this.